Hey everybody, Marco here, and welcome to another Pencil Mark video. I've got my math rock playing in the background. Uh, it's Saturday morning, and I'm going to try to do another Sudoku solve. So, um, this is a type I've done on this channel before. It's another common um, Sudoku variant type, but it's got a little twist that I haven't personally done before yet in Sudoku. This is an arrow Sudoku, meaning that Besides regular Sudoku rules, there's also these circles and arrows. And what the only thing that that means is that the five digits on the arrow here in these spots, they equal this digit in the circle. I should probably um, write that out a different way. Let's say this is, I don't know, just for example purposes. If this is 11111, then it's five. To just can repeat on an arrow, they just can't like repeat in places where Sudoku rules apply. So in these five digits in one cage, like they're on the same arrow, so that's fine, but they still have to be unique digits by Sudoku. The other interesting thing about this is that we do have two jit two jitted. <laughs> Why can't I speak? Two digit ovals here. So the two digits that um, get entered into here, it's treated as a two digit number read from left to right. So this is a 12, for example, if this was a one and this was a two. And that would be the sum of all the things here on the arrow. Now, I have recently been um, trying to make my videos a little bit better by editing out silence, but that also does make the time that I took to solve the puzzles a little bit more, I guess, uh, hidden. So what I've decided to do for this video and maybe videos in the future is to include a live split timer if it's like only one Sudoku solve. So yeah, um, that's why I've got this thing above my head here on the video. It should keep track of the time here and also like not to, to not hide any cuts in the video. All right, and with that being said, let's try to do this thing. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, and it is from one of the 2022 puzzle sets. I did skip over it. But I wanted to try, because it was like a type that I wasn't really familiar with, but I wanted to try to come back to it. So yeah, let's start. Um, I'm going to press this button and it should start the timer. Uh, there we go. Right. So um, I'm going to look at the small um, arrows first. Or rather, I mean the one-digit arrows. This is five cells here, as well as um, down here. This is also five cells. We have two pairs which are in the same region, which are at least one, two each. And then a single cell, which is at least one. So this is definitely a seven, eight, or nine. But we do have a one here that sees this cell, so this is at least a two, meaning that the arrow takes at least eight, so it can only go one up. That means we have a minimal setup of, I guess, this is the minimal arrow, and at most one of these twos can change to a three. So we do know these two cells and these two cells each have a one, and that's going to go into those places by Sudoku. This two up here cannot change to a three because there's already a three in that box. And then I'm just going to make marks here that these two cells are either two or three. And this cell up here is either eight or nine. With the other arrow here, we do have a one looking at it from the, the right side. So we can say a similar thing. This is, minimally, this is going to be eight. So both of these pairs need a one. I'm going to pencil mark this in because we can't disambiguate it, but this one goes down here. Whoops, down here. 
And actually, that makes this a 9, because now we have a 1. I mean, these two cells see each other, and they can't be 1. So these are 2, 3 minimum, and these cells up here are 1, 2 minimum. What, what am I saying? These cells are a 1, 2, 3 pair by themselves as well. So this is actually just forced to be a 9, yeah. This is a 2. This is going to be the 3. And this is a 1, 2 pair. So that, I think that is most of what we can get with the smaller arrows, but the bigger arrows, those are going to be trouble. So let's see if we can do stuff with regular Sudoku. Let's check ones. Ones are in these spots, these spots, these spots. But it can't be this spot because we have, I mean, at least one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five here. It's definitely... I mean, um, one, two, one, one, one. Well, no, it's not one, two. Um, yeah, I mean, one, two, three. Like the absolute minimum, it's it's got to be over forty. So I don't think we can. Um, yeah, put, we can't put a one. I don't think we can put a three in this top left cell either. And these are the only other places where we can put ones. It's a little bit um, too far now. Let's at least um, make our our one pair here. Whoops. Um, I went a little bit too far. Let me undo the, the X's. Sevens do um, look up like so to put the seven in one of those spots. I don't know. I, I do think that the two digit number can easily be a seven or more. So I don't think that is a restriction quite yet. For the three, there are only two possibilities here in this middle cage. Um, hmm. Four also only has two possibilities in these spots. Oh, this is a four five pair. Um, four five pair. So the three does go down to the bottom. With the four five pair being there, that means the leftovers are one, seven, eight, nine. Seven, eight, nine, we can't really constrain yet. Not the one either. Let's see what else we can do. In the middle right box, I don't think two can be placed in this spot because that would make both of these cells three. So it is either a two up here or a two in the units digit of the arrow. I don't know how much we can say about the arrow, but this four group down here is six, seven, eight, nine, which is definitely going to increase the arrow by a lot. If this is six, seven, eight, nine, then the minimum is, well, 6, 7, 8, which is 21. Those, these four digits are not really constrained at all. Their minimum, I guess, is 3, 4 in these two cells, which is, yeah, 28. And um, 1, 2 are covered, so this is also maybe 3, 4, which is 35. But the maximum is not guaranteed. I mean, we don't know what the maximum is. Oh, wait. There's a thing which I did not see. There's a 2 from all the way up above that's going to resolve this 1-2 pair, making this here a 2-3 pair. But we've just discovered but we've just discovered that this cannot be a 2. So yeah, this that this is at least 35 in this arrow. So we've got to put a 3 in this spot and a 2 up here. And now, by Sudoku, we've only got two options for the 2 in these spots. But we said this was at least 35 in the arrow, so the 2 has to go up to the upper arrow, making this an 8 arrow. That should work. That does give us 8 below here, making this, I guess, a 6, 7, 9 triple. So this up here is six, seven, six, nine, six, seven, nine. That's going to be 36. Now, now that it's not 35 because we went up one because it's now six, seven, nine instead of six, seven, eight. The other two pairs, well, this pair is restrict still minimum three, four, but this pair now goes up to it can't have a 3, it can't have a 5, so this is 4, 6. So, quick notes, this is... 
minimum 10. This below here, 6, 7, 9 is minimum 22. And this is minimum 7. We have to use the minimums to fill out this thermometer, this arrow properly. So, so yeah, we do actually just have a 39 arrow, the Miku arrow, with other minimum cells. This is a 3, 4 pair, which gets resolved like so because of the three on the left. Let's see, three goes up here. And let's see what we can resolve by Sudoku. We now know that this is a three pair. Oh, never mind. This is just a three by Sudoku. So now we have our threes in these spots. That's all threes. Yeah, okay. Um, What else do we have? Our missing numbers in the bottom left are four, which is, yeah, I, I was looking at the four when I w wanted to look at the three, but it's the four is in one of those two spots. The six and the eight are unconstrained. So we've got to mark them in every single spot here. Five is a pair in these cells. Six is unconstrained. Seven just doesn't go in the middle. Eight doesn't go in the bottom. 9 doesn't go on the left side. Not a lot of constraints there. Let's check the arrow minimum real quick. Oh, um, actually this cell over here in the middle on the arrow, that is restricted to an 8 or a 9, which is pretty interesting. This is going to be huge for figuring out the arrow minimum because it's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the box as well as 7 and 8 pointing to, at 7 and 6 pointing to it. This cell here has 1, 2, 3, 4 looking at it, so it's got a 5 minimum. Well, let's figure this out. Our minimum up here in the top left is, I guess it's 5. I'll do this in a separate layer in, let's use, I don't know, this weird teal that's not going to be seen as a solution at all. So this minimum is 15, with the 15 only being reachable if we have a 5 in this spot, which would make this cell down here a 5. This cell, this minimum is an 8. That's 28. This 6 cell arrow, I guess the minimum is 21. Because these are all see each other. 21. And then maybe 5 and 1. This is just a rough estimate. That would make this 20 plus 30, adding the 8 and the 21 and the 1, and 5. So we definitely have at least 55. Let's get rid of this layer. And let's take our red back. So we do know that there can't be a 4 in the units digit as well. Oh, 5 is actually covered as well. So this is, um, I guess, 6, 7, 8, not, or 9. That's going to be our 10s digit. Oh, um... This is going to be a 1-2 pair in these spots because 2 is also restrained to those spots. Let's see if that helps us with Sudoku. 4 is going to be restrained to here since the 4 is also in the center. 5 has these three options. I guess we can still mark those. 6, unconstrained. 8, not constrained either, and 9. It does get pushed to these three, which I guess I can still mark. We have 8 on the... L in this middle region, we have 8 on the left, and we have 6 on the on in the center column. 7 does get pushed down to these two spots, and I guess 9 can still go in three spots. It's a little bit more constrained than I thought it was before, but... Yeah, still, um, it's not going to be easy to figure out. In the right region, we're missing 5, 7, 9. Oh yeah, 7 does go here because it's in the fourth row on the left side, and this bottom pair is a 4, 6 pair, so this is a 7. Meaning that we've got a 5, 6 pair in... No, it's not a 5, 6 pair, it's a 5... 8 pair in these two upper spots. That resolves this cell as a 9, this cell as a 6, this cell as a 7, this cell as an 8. That's pretty big. 
Um, let's see what that gives us by Sudoku. The 8 gets pushed down here. And up above, this is either a 4 or a 9, but now we have a 9. So this is a 4. In the center now we have 9, 5, and what was our last number? This is going to be a 6 in one of these spots now. That's pretty big. Um, okay, we should be able to get numbers in the top re region now. This is uh, a 1 on the left. 2 we have, 3 we have, 4, 5 is the pair. 7 is also going to be on the left, and 9 is in the center. Now let's see here. That does push 2 to these two spots down here. So it does stay out of the oval in the upper arrow. Is there any more Sudoku that we can do before we have to figure out the arrow? Let's see, threes are definitely done. Ones, well for ones we have two pairs and this uh, triplet. Twos are restricted to two pairs. If we want it to be super, super clever, Never mind, we can't use a uniqueness argument because of arrows. <laughs> but if this was regular Sudoku, we could say that if the 1 is in one of these spots, like one of these two spots here, then we would have the 1, 2, 2, 1, or the 2, 1, 1, 2, like so. And we could say that's ununique, but no, this actually has an effect on the sum of the arrows, so we can't quite say that yet. Threes we completely resolved. Fours? Oh well, we can get the four in this cell here by Sudoku now. Now that we have fours above and to the right. The four is pushed to the right column in the top left square. It's still completely unrestrained in the top right, so while we've got four over here with these x's, it can go anywhere up here on the top right, and we've got these two spots in the middle right. Five? No, not a lot of restrictions on five. None, none at all. Sixes? We don't have a lot on sixes either. Oh, sevens. Um, the seven has to be in this spot, because in the third row, sevens are blocked in all other positions. Wait, no. I do not want to cut the entire layer. So what does that give us? Not a lot in the other spots. I guess we can remove 7 from the units digit here. Let's check how our sum is doing. Let's use this uh, teal here again. Now our sum is going to be... Well, first of all, this is 10. These are guaranteed um, 7. We have 9, we have 3. Well, let's just say this is 12. This is, yeah, 9. This is 3, and this is 2. This is 5. So what we know is that this is going to be 5 plus 9 plus 12. That is, uh, that's 26. Plus 10, that's 36. Plus 7, that is 40, 43. Um, and then we have one, it's 43 plus these um, five spaces. This is either a one or a seven up he here. On the right, this is ranging from a five to an eight. Down here in the middle left, we have a five, six and a six, nine. And on top we have something that's completely unrestrained, so I don't know what my goal here was with this, but I certainly did not accomplish it. Four, four, five, and nine are missing in this third row. I can mark this on, I can mark the candidates here. Four, five, six are missing in the third column. This in, col in row eight, that's a six, eight, nine. I'll fix that a bullet, but that's a little bit off center. That's, I guess, a 6, 7, 9 down below. That's a 6, 7 because there is a 9 above. Up top, we are missing 5, 
six eight nine five six seven eight gosh the ending of this is tough how's this gonna resolve top right feels like it's still way too vague we don't know where the four five six seven eight nine that's a lot where it can go i'm trying to look for other things that are blocked off nine is constrained to three cells which i guess i can mark three is already there yeah one we know is two three cells two is two cells i guess i can mark the one triple here four is a pair on the right five is geez well it's in it's in the two right columns six is very unconstrained we do know eight gets pushed into the upper left square the two by two that's not helping a lot though and nine we just marked this is way too many pencil marks do we have to do something in the top right then i don't see anything we can necessarily do in anywhere else on the grid like this is the five six seven eight nine is restricted to three spots okay i'm taking another look at the marks we have here it's 43 plus five of the x's so our minimums are i guess um ones one in the top right i mean uh top middle five in the top right five and six down below and another one up top so the minimum of this is 53 59 so the min is 61 the maximum we can get is a 7 an 8 a 9 a 6 and an 8 that's 15 that's 15 so that makes 38 adding 38 to 43 is well it's a 73 plus 8 that's 81 that means well uh shoot let me get rid of those notes because i put them on the long, wrong layer uh okay that means top uh, top left cannot be a 9 by um, maximal sum not being able to reach 90-something. That means the 9 is now a pair in these two spots looking down. So we can get rid of 9 in this spot and put a 9 here on the left. I guess we had um, 43 plus 5 of the unknowns. Now we have, um, now we have, I guess, 52 plus, uh, four question marks. It's going to, the minimum is going to go up a little bit we, since we had five, six minimum, but now the minimum is five, nine in the bot in the middle, right? Ugh, middle left. So that is going to be 64 minimum and 81 maximum. Notably, it cannot be 70-something because 7 is blocked. I thought this would give me something much bigger, but it's not. Oh, um, oh, I do see something. Um, This is now a 6-8 pair with the 6-8 down below. So this is, in fact, a 1-2 pair up above it. Now that this cannot be an 8 or a 6 anymore, that drastically lowers the maximum. It's going to go down from 81 to a maximum of 75 and that means eight is impossible now in the top left corner that means this is a six shoot i got, i lost my blue now six was one of the more unconstrained numbers so that is going to fix a lot of things six is going to go down here and five is going to be here we're going to get the eight six pair resolved down below that's going to give us the seven position in the in the bottom middle that gives us our 5-8 pair, which is going to go down a little, but not too much. That's a 6-9 pair. That's a 6-7-9 triple. Does the 6 go across? Well, we guess, I guess we have a 6 pair in the middle on the right. Oh, um, with the knowledge that the 6 is going to be um, in one of these three cells down below, that means in the middle the six is going to be on the right we got our four that does look up to put the four on the right in the cage upright
what can we say about the arrow sum now? We, we've added this to make 52. I, I guess we can make it 58 with a 6 now. And now we do have, yeah, three unknowns. The minimum is 1, 1, and then 5 to make it 65. Oh, I guess that means we can um, remove the 1 from the candidates upright. That means we get a 1, 2 pair, in fact, that we have to disambiguate via the arrow. This is now a 1, 2 pair. This is a 4, 5 pair. That means the 5 also cannot be up here or down here. That means we do get a 9 and an 8. So we know the arrow is going to be 68. Checking the sum. Again, we had 58, so these three cells need to sum up to 10, the ones we have x's on here. Since the one on the right is 5 to 8, that means this 1 to 7 pair must resolve to um, 1. These two have to add up to 9, the two other ones. It's either a 1, 8 or a 2, 7. But since 8 is in the top row, this is going to be a 7, and this is going to be a 2, which is going to resolve the 1, 2 pairs. Okay, we have the arrow done. I think that is all the logic we need for the arrow. So let's just get the rest, shall we? 1, 7 pair resolves like so. 7s, those are still 2 pairs down below. 4, 5 pair, 4, 5 pair, and we have another 4 pair on the right. So that's got to be disambiguated by fives. Sixes are in the center. We don't know how they go yet. Sevens are gone. Eights are still ambiguous, I guess. Well, we know they're in the center as well. Oh, six, seven pair. I mean, six, eight pair is in the center of uh, the top right cage. So that's that can't be a five. This is This has to be a six, eight pair. And then four, five... 9 go in the other three cells. 4 has to go on the right. 9 has to go on the top. But 5 still has a bunch of options. Now we know 5 is on the right in both of these groups. So down below, it's got to be on the left. That should disambiguate it. Or at least it gives us where the 5 is. That gives us the pairs on the left hand side. That pushes the 4 down, that pushes the 9 up here. We get the 6-8 with the 8 below. Was that always there? I th No, we just got the 8 with the 5-8 pair. Right. Down below here, we just got the 7 up above. Now this is a 6. That gives us the 6-9 pair. That pushes the 9 up here, and we get a 7. Done. Uh Oh, I need to manually select that. All right. Done. Wow, that, that took a little bit longer than I expected. But um, that was some... Pretty interesting logic there, and a lot of summation we had to do for the upper left arrow. That was tough. Thanks for uh, watching, everyone. I'll try to keep improving here so that my Sudoku times can be a little bit more competitive. But yeah, I'm still very, very rusty in these Sudoku variants that require you to add up a lot of stuff. As you can see, the, the main deduction here really was about finding out how constrained the top left arrow sum was by just continuously summing up seven no 16 different numbers it was tough i can see why this was a puzzle with a very high point value anyways thank you all for watching and i'll be back with i don't know Something. Bye-bye.